Welcome to a short roundup about the 3D capabilities of DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. Today I want to look at what are typical use case scenarios where you use Fusion, what are the primary strengths for 3D stuff in Fusion and where are the limitations of the 3D rendering and the 3D applications that you can do in DaVinci Resolve Fusion or Fusion Studio. Recently I have done quite a lot of tutorials about uh, individual 3D topics and even some use cases um, and the question comes up again and again how far can you actually go just inside Resolve or just inside Fusion. Does it actually replace software like Maya or Blender or is it more like uh, some assisting features, do I even need to learn them, can I just stay in 2D if I have my 3D applications or if I work with other people who use 3D applications. So today I really want to place the software a bit, explain uh, what the 3D environment is primarily targeted at and how it can help your workflow. So today not a step-by-step -step tutorial, instead an overview discussion, so lean back and enjoy and let's dive in. The first thing that may come to mind when I'm talking about the 3D environment in Fusion are like 3D texts and motion graphics and uh, motion graphics with particles and you see here a few examples of recent tutorials I have released. Um, but this is not actually my main thing what I'm thinking about and my main focus at the moment. I want to talk more about compositing in 3D. And there the first example I think of are 3D set extensions. Now set extensions can be simple, if the camera is locked off you can actually do it completely in 2D or even when you have a moving camera sometimes it's enough to just track individual points and with a little bit of trickery you can fake the perspective even in 2D. However if you truly have rotating moving camera and you need the perspective changes, the correct parallax movement etc. then you should work in 3D. Uh, in this case you are not necessarily building like highly complex 3D scenes, potentially you're just adding some images on an image plane, maybe you're doing a little bit of projection. Uh, here in this example I am adding an image of a house but you could also think of adding for example a green screen actor on a simple card like in 2D, uh, on a 2D image plane you place that actor in the 3D environment so that if there's a little bit of distance uh, and the camera films that actor or films that card or films the house in this example, um, you still get an accurate 3D feeling from, from the final rendering. The second scenario I'm thinking about are these pen and tile kind of um, video creations where you use photographs as a video background or as video source in the first place. So you can sometimes stitch together photographs or you can use uh, cycloramic photographs uh, as a new background or as a full environment in which you then can animate the camera. You can drive this even further by using projections and by using uh, like foreground background projections to project photographic elements or matte paintings on different simple geometries and then film them again in 3D in order to come up with the three dimensional uh, film environments. Sometimes this is called 2.5D because you still work with two dimensional images and you just place them onto cards or card projection, parallax projection, you find different names around this. But the idea is always that you have two dimensional elements which you can uh, somehow stack in a 3D environment and then film them with a 3D camera for a convincing 3D effect. You could take this a bit further by taking 360 photographs or HDRI uh, backgrounds and use them, composite them together with video footage or you could go um, all the way to VR footage and can do stitching inside of Fusion. You can stitch together VR footage and then either render it out as a 360 um, output or you could uh, work within the VR environment and then again create a new camera track for a 2D output. Finally you can import full 3D models into Fusion and I've done that in a recent tutorial where I kind of tried to do everything in Fusion except for the modeling and this is possible, um, however perhaps the more important task is that you can use the geometry for secondary compositing tasks. So if you are working in Blender or Maya or in other 3D software, perhaps you are rendering out your 3D objects directly from that software, um, but you might want to work in Fusion in order to 
create shadows or you need certain masks or so. And in some cases, it's actually easier to work in 3D than in 2D uh, and to create, for example, shadows directly from 3D or to create masks from 3D. Here, this example, I rendered completely from Fusion. However, even if the spaceship was coming from another application, even if you were rendering it from another application, you might still, for example, create the shadows inside of Fusion. There are certain 3D tasks which uh, can be performed quickly in Fusion and almost interactively. Uh, and sometimes it's just faster, especially if it closely relates to your 2D compositing task. It might just be faster to do it directly in Fusion instead of going to a full-blown 3D rendering application. So how much can you actually do in Fusion when it comes to uh, modeling, lighting and rendering and, and what should you not try in Fusion? So first of all, let's talk about geometry. So when I'm creating geometry in Fusion, I have like simple geometric objects which I can create and combine and modify. So I have my cubes and spheres and cylinders and uh, pyramids and that kind of stuff. And I do have some options to modify them. For example, I can bend them or I can replicate them and so on. What you cannot do is like directly uh, go into the 3D object and like extrude vertices or edges and um, directly model or, or even paint like, you know, what you can do in 3D modeling and applications or in ZBrush or that kind of stuff. So you're not directly uh, crafting and sculpting. You're just laying out some basic shapes and you can use these then for um, for, for projection. You can modify a bit also image driven. So you can, for example, if you have a Z channel for an image, you can use that or you can use grayscale images to extrude surfaces and you can come up with some interesting shapes there. But it's all the kind of procedural stuff that you are doing. You would rarely think about uh, building a sophisticated model from scratch. You can import 3D objects, as I mentioned before, from other applications. So you can import FBX meshes or OBJ meshes. So from the major 3D applications, you can import the meshes. You can also import the textures and you have the illumination models to accurately render uh, the diffuse and specular color. You can get the shadows from lighting that you can set up inside of Fusion. So in this way, it's pretty sophisticated. Also, bump maps can be added or normal maps. So the lighting and shadow uh, can be replicated inside Fusion. So you could use it directly uh, to render these objects. And in some simple cases, that may very well work and might save you some time compared to uh, going back to a full 3D application. Or it might make it accessible to you if you're not uh, familiar with those applications and you're just using Fusion. However, there are definitely limitations when it comes to the rendering. So one thing which is missing is any form of um, global illumination and any form of interactive lighting. So you are not getting, uh, you are getting like direct lights, you are getting specularity and shadows, but you're not getting bounce light. You're not getting uh, subsurface scattering. Um, you are not getting ambient occlusion. You are getting regular shadows, but ambient occlusion you can create as a 2D post effect, but you're not getting it natively out of the rendering. Also, image-based lighting is not supported. So that's sometimes a very nice trick in other applications where you can use an HDRI map uh, to immediately light an image. Um, but this is not supported out of the box. Now, there are always certain workarounds and certain tricks how you can make this, uh, how you can simulate this or how you can make this somehow work, uh, but it is not a native rendering capability of the Fusion renderer. So in these cases, uh, really the true 3D renderers are uh, much, much more sophisticated. Also, there's a long list of uh, really advanced rendering capabilities that advanced rendering solutions have, like rendering cow sticks, for example. Uh, you don't think about that kind of stuff in Fusion. To put a bottom line under all of this, Fusion is strongest the closer you are to the 2D pipeline. So if you are working with footage, with photographs, matte paintings, VR footage, etc., uh, and you need the third dimension for projections, for the correct parallax, for the correct integration, then Fusion really shines. 
In addition, you have all these little tasks where the 3D environment can help your 2D compositing, where you can maybe use the 3D models and directly work with them interactively to create some shadow or to help your lighting uh, and, and create some additional passes that you may not have gotten from uh, the 3D side. In some cases, you might even be able to do the complete 3D work in Fusion, like use a model or use a logo or create something directly in Fusion if it's a small task and you don't have like the most sophisticated rendering requirements, you can do these kind of small tasks directly inside of Fusion. I hope this helped with the overall expectations of what you can do and cannot and should do and gives a bit of a stage. I have done a lot of tutorials recently about Fusion, so feel free to check them out on my channel and on my website. You also find a free course there that focuses more on 2D, but if you need the introduction, uh, go ahead. Otherwise, a like and subscribe is always appreciated. My name is Bernd. Thanks for watching.